you know, everywhere was red and my eyes were very, really swollen. So I went to the doctor and they um, prescribed me a stronger steroid cream to use in conjunction with the mild hydrocortisone that I told them I had, that I'd bought from the chemist. And they also gave me a referral to dermatology at that time. And that became, became a cycle of my skin clearing and then I'd stop using the creams and it would come back worse. I'd go back to the doctor, they'd prescribe me more cream. I'd use it for the amount of time. I'd stop using it, it would go become worse again. And then I'd go back to the doctor and it was just this cycle of using stronger and stronger and stronger steroid creams. And it got to the point when I was on all the steroids for it as well. And I was seeing a derm the dermatologist at this point. So their advice to me at this time was that I should go on methotrexate, which is an immunosuppressant. Um, and that wasn't something that I wanted to do, but they, there was nowhere else for them to go. I was on the strongest possible topical and all steroids you could have to manage my skin condition. Um, and it wasn't managing my skin condition at all. It was raging out of control. At some point around this time, I was trying to do a bit of research of my own on the internet and came across the ITSAN website, which is the International Topical Steroid Addiction Network, I believe. Um, and I found some photographs on there of people who, who had skin that looked exactly like mine. It was by this point, it spread from my face all the way to my upper body. So it was covering the top of my chest and all the way down my arms as well. And these are places I'd never had eczema before in my life. It was an entirely new experience to be, uh, to be so covered. So I read the information that was there and I looked at the photographs and I just was like, this is me. This is exactly what's happening to me. And it was at that point that I decided to stop using the steroids and realised that actually what was going on was that I was in topical steroid addiction and I needed to stop using steroids to let my body learn to heal itself. So I stopped using the steroids in February of 2016. People talk about a bone deep itch and that's the, that is how I, exactly how I would describe it. It's not something that can be relieved. It feels like it's so deep within the core of your being that you're never going to be able to satisfy it. My skin was awful for a very, very, very long time. Um, it fluctuated, you know, I had some days that were better than others, but most of the time I was bright red with very, very swollen eyes and cracked and itchy skin all over the top half of my body. But I used to have really, really long hair. I cut it all off because I, I couldn't stand anything on my face, anything touching my face and my skin. So it was really painful and really uncomfortable. And to this day, I've still got you know, pretty short hair, <laughs> particularly because it, you know, anything on my neck can be a bit itchy. Suddenly I couldn't wear half my clothes anymore. So I couldn't wear anything unless it was cotton or silk. I don't really have a lot of silk clothing. Underwear was really uncomfortable. So I stopped being able to wear a bra. Being in an, an office environment with lots and lots of other people and kind of not being able to control the airflow and things like that was very difficult. I had a lot of time off work because of this, probably uh, over a year in total. It gets into every aspect of your life. Like I couldn't stand being touched by anybody because my skin was so painful. Um, I was ashamed and embarrassed to go out because of how I looked. And then I went the other way and just started wearing lots of ridiculous clothes and just going out because I figured people were gonna look at me, I'd give them something to look at. Sweating was the one of the, the biggest triggers for me if I got hot or overheated or started sweating for any reason um, I would just I would be in an itch fest instantly um, so all of a sudden the things that I loved doing the most which were performing live with my bands were really difficult experiences and really uncomfortable experiences my topical steroid withdrawal journey is I think pretty much at an end now the eczema that you can see on my face now is much more confined to the areas that it has been as you know my whole life so I feel like this is normal eczema rather than anything that's related to the topical steroid withdrawal and um, but the, 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 the whole journey for me has been um, over two and a half years the other side of it as well apart from this the obviously the discomfort that you feel in your own body and you feel with your skin is that topical steroid withdrawal causes uh, it can make you very depressed and not just because of the situation that you find yourself in, it has an effect on you mentally as well. So having to manage those feelings of hopelessness um, and not knowing how long this process was going to last was really, really, really hard. So for other people who are going through topical steroid withdrawal or have eczema that isn't going away, um, I would say to them that it is worth stopping the steroids 
and sitting with it and being patient and uh, accepting all the challenges that m managing a really difficult skin condition takes. Surround yourself with people that are going to be able to support you and look after you. You need to find something that's going to work for you. And yes, you know, listen to other people and listen to uh, what advice they have to offer. But it's your body and your body is unique to you and it will respond in a way that's completely different to somebody who's going through the same process as you just because you are a different person. Have faith in the process, have faith that um, you will get better and your body knows how to heal itself and it will and you won't have to be in pain forever.